Hey guys, the Night Pants Nation tour continues. October 23rd, Baltimore, Maryland, one night only. There's already a low ticket count. Going to have to add a show, so get on those tickets now. October 28th, Brea, California. November 12th and 13th, Arlington, Virginia. Get your tickets now at ryansickler.com. I'm comedian Ryan Sickler, and this is my stepson, Derek Crawford. While we were on quarantine, class might have been out, but school was still in session. All right, let's go. Very serious business. You have lives, especially this one, in your literal hands and feet. It was like an old country road, and it had an awesome hill to jump. Jumping them? The yeah, cars? dude, we jumped the shit out of them. Oh, no, hold on a minute. Look at it. Look at it. Aloha. Woo! The virus, y'all. <laughs> You're just heavy on the brakes. I mean, Jesus Christ. Stay in your lane. You're herky jerky with turns. You look like Patrick Mahomes' sister, Patricia. This hair is beautiful. You look like Patty Mahomes, bro. Patty! You about to run a red light. It's gonna be red. And there it is. Roop, roop. Hey, oh Jeff! <laughs> Jeff, <Bob. laughs> The cops come in, they're pepper spraying everybody. Like, come on, we can't get arrested. The F building is either used for fighting if you're blinking on it, or for blink. smoking. Smoking what? Vape. <laughs> what a different world. Hey, thank you for taking me out driving, man. It means a lot. You got lucky, bro. You could have had a real piece of shit. Instead, you got a pretty decent piece of shit. Go all the way down to Lincoln and up Ocean Park. Watch where you're going. You flew right through a crosswalk. We get pulled over? Jeez. But that was, that was good. This is not good for my anxiety. This is Learner's Permit. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. Make sure you go to my website, get your tickets to the Night Pants Nation tour. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube and the Patreon. If you or someone you know has a story that has to be heard, please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, hopefully we get to do an episode with you. It's five bucks a month. All right. And you get the honeydew a day early ad free. And uh, if you sign up for a year, you get over a month free. All at no additional cost. All right. And the stories right now are just insane. They're not stopping. I promise you we got an email list full of stuff going. we're going through right now. And it's such a, a good show. And I can't thank you enough for your support. All right. Uh, Honeydew Podcast is the dot uh, com is the website. And uh, there it is. You know what we do over here? We highlight the low lights. Uh, these are the stories behind the storytellers. I'm very excited to have this storyteller on here today. First time here on the Honeydew. Some Maryland love, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Shafir. Welcome Thank to you. the Honeydew. Thank you very much. You look good, dude. You reminded me about Maryland just real quick. I was wearing some Maryland shorts. You always video. do. Yeah. I know. You rep, No one reps the flag like our state reps our flag. I, you know what's funny about that? What? I When you live there... You don't think about it. I didn't until I got out. And yeah. then I stepped away and someone said, people in Maryland rep their flag harder than people in Texas. And I yeah, was like- There too. We do. Yeah. Easily And then I more. thought that is a weird thing that we're so flag proud. But we do have a kick-ass flag. But also we go like entire outfits. Yeah. Full, I realized <laughs> it's a firefly like four, five, six years ago. And it was in Delaware. And then all you could, the Maryland full, it's not just a little a patch on <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's all of it. The whole it's all shirt. It's the team's, the city's logos, the, everything. The, yeah. The crab uh, bumper sticker mm -hmm. shaped like a crab yep. in the Maryland I got flag. that magnet on my fridge. Yeah. And on a pint glass. Yeah. They've made one of those with like a Darwin mashup, right? Probably. With like yeah. no legs or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We rep it fucking hard. Hard. Anyway, some guy wrote, it's like, hey, if you ain't from Maryland, you can't wear that shit like coming at me. And I was like, First of all, I am, and second of all, so I am. So I know that's not a rule. Yeah, right. <laughs> what are you that's talking about, dude? Because I'm from yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, anyone's allowed to wear it. What? The, what are you talking? It's not a yeah. frat, bro. Right. No. Um. Well, I'm stoked to have you here, dude. Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, it's good to have you. Sweet in ass the, studio. Thank you, man. Um, please plug everything. All of it right now. All right. Um, well, I'm on Dates tour. Dates out the gates. Dates out the gates. Yeah. I'm on tour right now. I'll be in Boston, December 9th. 
uh, Cleveland and Phoenix and, uh, and and Denver are coming up in February and, uh, and and Vancouver as well. Yeah, I'm fucking torn and loving it, loving stand up. Got taken away for too long. Now it's back. It my, my podcast, Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank. Have you not been on there? No, remember we did um, we did to promote my album, and we, yeah, did, a we did half of one, one outside at the store, and that's yeah. all we could do. I guarantee you, I have that. We, if we, uh, I mean, you did. You put it up. I did put it, up that the half? part. Put up. Yeah, and you put it preceding another episode, and it was Coming like a, to finish it. A, a sort of like a one-two uh, episode. Yeah. Yeah, we got to finish it off though. I would love to. <laughs> yeah. Gotta listen to it. We got to the like the most tragic off. part. Yeah, right like, and that's a wrap. <laughs> You had a fucking stupid kid. It ruins yeah, the my whole dumb podcast kid. Yeah, whole scenario. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we got to finish that. That was great. Ari Shafir's Kevin Tank. It's on YouTube, and then um, and then I do other stuff on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Ari Shafir. I have yoga classes on there. We're doing one after this. You'll be on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to yeah. teach me yoga? Yeah, I mean, I've done yoga. yoga, but your yoga? I'm a yogi, yeah. All right. Yeah, I You're my yogi. University of New Delhi. Is it campus. for real? Yeah. Oh, so you, this is real. Well, you said when you said stupid, you just were calling it stupid. No, I mean, I yeah, yeah. No, it's legitimately. Retarded. Yeah, okay. You're yeah. about to give me some real yoga after. This. <laughs> no, no, no. It will try our best, but I'm it won't be good. I'm, I'm, it's accessible. Need, all right. Have you ever done it? Yoga? Yeah, yeah a couple times. I Perfect. Have. I have a mat in my car right now. I could yeah. go get. I'm where you were if I did it like twenty more times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I just like I know those. Moves. Okay, cool. All I know right. what to teach you. Yeah, I know a little bit of shit. I might not be able to show you all the moves, but I'll be like, I'll get you to where your imagination can fill in what it should look like. Okay. You'll go with Ari and all Prince. Right. I've seen your videos. Okay, yeah. great. And you wore the Maryland shorts in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. day. Yeah. I took them to quarantine. That's where I did the first one. Yeah, it was great. All <laughs> but right. Nate so, Bargatze said he was like, he was like, so were you just teaching like legitimate yoga? I don't understand. I'm like, he goes, oh, he goes, then I saw one and one of the moves you were like saying that Hitler gets the job done or something like that. And then it hit me like, oh, you're joking. I'm like, yeah, Nate. I mean, they're moves, but like, I'm not gonna teach it seriously. Seriously, <laughs> he was like, I apologize for you. All of a sudden, that. Ari's a fucking real yogi. Yeah, dude, we did him in in um in Ecuador. We found a place with just a beautiful backdrop, and I do there in the mornings, and I shave my head. I did a whole series. All right, let's talk about okay. this because your okay. traveling is has been over the years has been insane. I love that you do this. Thank you. Yeah. Um, especially Thanks. as a divorcee. You are a divorcee, technically. Do you remember when I fucking called you that in San Francisco? I'm going, oh my God, you're a divorcee. You're like, I am a divorcee. Wow, yeah, it hit me again. Yeah, just you're now. technically a divorcee. I yeah. will fill it out every once in a while in a four <laughs> minutes there. I'm yeah, like, you, you know what? Yeah, yeah I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can travel. You can pick up at t tonight. You could be tonight. like, fuck it, I'm going to Ecuador. You could. Yeah. And you do. You do things like that. So talk to me about some of this travel. You've had some. Pretty scary uh, stories sometimes, too. Sometimes, that one in Ecuador, I remember getting that spot and like, and the people next to us. I just went for it to look like a stupid. So like how do you even find it? How are you finding these spots? Airbnb is okay. everywhere. Plus, it's crooked as shit in Ecuador. So if you stay for a week and you like it, you're like, can we just do this? Oh, forget all those fees, and they're like, absolutely, cash me. So it's great. Okay, it works out really well. It's cheap. So we found a great one, just an overlook of like a city and a lake weight. So I just doing yoga and then shaved my head, got like a white outfit from um, from this market town. And then the people renting to us, they left and like, so what do you, you guys teach yoga in America? And I was like, no, They're like the sh shaved head. And I had to look up how to say bromare, how to say joke. And they're like, what's the joke? I'm like, the, I'm just bad at this. I don't know. <laughs> the joke is I don't do this. And they're like, oh, I don't get it. Like, anyway, it's online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I like going places. I went to I went to China, did one that run in China. Are you doing stand up on these places? Yeah. You are. Yeah. It's not just traveling. This last one, Ecuador was just travel. Okay. Uh Southeast Asia was just travel. I finished a special and I was like I already had it in my head, like, I'll edit that thing and then I have no responsibility. Let me get lost. And where's the where's the scariest place you've been? It's always the first places. You step off the plane in another place, all the all the fucking the, the fear of other shit kicks in and you're just like they must be trying to rob you. Myanmar was like, it's the most Buddhist friendly country, and you're me like, fuck it, everybody's gonna rob me. Like always worry and it's just not real at all. Like at all. Um one guy was like, we were trying to like hike to a fucking long, long like we got out of the bus station, everybody's right there with like get, get, our cabs, our cabs. It's just overwhelming. I don't know. I'm an introvert. So that shit's like, no, no, no. Yeah. And I'll fuck myself over and I'll just walk away. And then like think about it, but then I'm like, I for sure should have gotten a cab. Would have been like three dollars. 
when maybe it should have been two. Like, I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah. My line adjusts to what I'm supposed to spin as like a backpacker. <laughs> um, but then I'm just like walking, some guy pulls up and he was like a little bit of English and he was like, where are you going? And we're like, to this thing. He's like, I can I can uh, take you if you want or like, I, I can give you directions. And um, and we're like, no, what, what, like, what do you want? What's like your goal? And he was like, all right, you got, I am trying to practice my English. <laughs> and you're like, all right. It was just really nice. And then he drove us one by one, like two miles down the road and come back. It was crazy. One by one? Yeah, we all just went. Why one the by front, one? Motorcycle. Oh, he's on the motorcycle. back. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this group, we started going like we were in like um, somewhere in the South. And then me and Mars, like, um, they just got freedom back from the military. Military took over, put their leader under house arrest and just like, couldn't do shit there. And it just opened up to tourism like 15, 20 years ago, something like that. So it's all oh, real new. Yeah. But there's areas where they're still, they haven't done, gotten done like, um, you know, ethnically cleansing. <laughs> so they're still taking care of it. So they don't let foreigners into those areas. No. Yeah. They're For like, real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> they're like slowly like taking those where people down. Where we're killing these people, you're Pretty not much. allowed in there. Pretty much. They'll say like, no, it's not, whatever. But like. They're not. They're not. That's happy. like the parents' bedroom. <laughs> like you can go wherever you want in the house. Just don't go in yeah, there. Yeah, they won't let foreigners in there. They won't let foreigners Man. rent motorized vehicles at all. So they work around it in like Bagan and like really nice places, like really old places. They'll like get you like electric scooters, so you can like see stuff because it's not like with the, with the motor. But anyway, there's whole swaths where you can't go into. So where's it can't like that? So like if this is Myanmar, you can go here and then you can go here and then none of this top part and none of this side. Shaw State, Sean State, something like that. But anyway, we had a bus from here, this awesome lake here. And we're, the bus goes, we just saw the route. It goes like this. And we didn't know. We're like, why? It's like we did the right, GPS, yeah, yeah. the Google Maps. We can get there in 13 hours. And this was like a day and a half. So the three of us were just like, let's just go for it. So we didn't read the rules, but foreigners aren't allowed to like sleep there. You can just drive through. So we get out the first day, somewhere in the middle, and then we go to a hotel, and they all just stare at us. What do you mean? Like we get there. How many people? Three guys playing poker over there. Um, and then <laughs> nobody behind the counter right here. So we go in and we look at them and they're looking at us. They don't say a word. Don't say a word. They're just staring. See, that that shit creeps me out. It wasn't dangerous like stare like, like get oh, the fuck okay. out. It was just like, what the fuck? So, okay, so okay. hold on. So anywhere in Asia, if you're white, you are a fucking landmark. People want to take pictures with you. Is That's what I want to ask you. But okay, so that's interesting because... I have friends that have um, Canadian and U.S., mm -hmm. and they'll travel with the Canadian sure. because people fucking hate us everywhere else. Totally not true. People okay, love us. This we is, have money, okay, and we <laughs> fucking tip in places where there is no we tips. Tip. People tip. love us. The, the traveler ones, people love. They don't love our policies or some shit. Sure, sure, They sure. love us. What okay. a terrible... That was fucking when we were kids, people were saying that. No way. Okay. Uh-uh. So you were... Here's who they hate. In terms of backpackers, Australians, they get drunk and throw up too much. They're fun, but... They go too hard. And Chinese tourists are the worst tourists in the world. They'll say no. They'll be straight racist to those. Like, you can't be here. And Russians always fight. But the Americans, fight. Irish, Canadians, they, all, they love all of us. Okay. We're just bringing money. Third world countries, they love. It's like, yeah, we don't know prices. So you're... You're saying you're like a celebrity in Oh yeah, but also like in girls, Asia. blonde girls, they'll just they line up, literally line up to take pictures with them. We saw one girl in Myanmar somewhere else in in Bagan. Um, yeah, but gone. Line, and then one girl got back in line. She changed her shirt and got back in line. Taking, yeah, because they're blondes. These blonde girls from Canada who are on gap year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They line up to take pictures. I had somebody ask me to hold their baby once. So, so Just I could because take a you picture have white with, skin. It's so, they're like, what the fuck? Especially from a small town. If you're from like Beijing or like one of the biggest that you've seen them. Mm -hmm. But half of Beijing are tourists from the I fucking I love that we're saying you've villages. seen them about white <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you've seen them. Oh. It's nuts, dude. You feel like a straight celebrity. Just That's straight up like nuts. Oh, I didn't Tom know Cruise. that. I had no idea. We walked in that market, in that town. Uh, well, I'll tell you that later. But like anywhere you go, it's it's nuts. They're just like, they've never seen it. They've never seen anything like it. My dad told me they used to do that in like Germany when like American GIs would go down the road, like in the suburbs and stuff. They would all stop and just come out of their, their houses, like post like 60s and 70s. Just like, they just never seen one. Can you imagine never having seen a, a race? white person. Or yeah. An, well, yeah, you're right. Well, I have, I'm sure I haven't seen some races out there. 
probably some island like vj singh i don't think i've seen that color <laughs> <laughs> wherever that is you know it's like, was it wasn't black or brown or gray it was like his own color i've never seen one of those in person <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, that's great. It's like an ash is still on the log or something. <laughs> what is that? Where is he from, Peaches? It's not India. Know. It's I different from India. I don't know. <laughs> it's a region. I don't know. Oh, shit. Yeah, but that's how they feel about us. So, so it was that look of like, what? Because we also are in that place where it's like, but we didn't know that. We didn't know you weren't allowed to go there. We were just like, why don't we go there? And people were like, don't. I'm like, why? They're like, that's not where you go. You go around. We were just like, you're an idiot. Wrong. Anytime I've second guessed any other culture, they handed out barf bags in East Timor, going up all these roads. And they hand up, and you're like, why? I've been taking the buses. But I'm like, why do you give them to locals? I can see why you give them to me. You thought I couldn't handle it. But why? And then I'm like, oh, they're trash bags to throw your trash out. But then halfway up the road, everyone just throws their trash right out the window <laughs> with impunity. Just they don't care at all. <laughs> And so I'm like, oh, oh their like own that. country, dude. And then you see it just like line all the train tracks and all the roads, just trash. Oh, so much trash in Myanmar. And then you're like, why do they have? And then they just start barfing at them. Even the locals. The are locals, yeah. They've just been on a bus less than me. Those? Oh, fuck. Yeah. What does that smell like? <laughs> not great. Oh, not great. God. It's okay until the AC Damn. AC moves, and then it's like, well, there it is. Oh, yeah. Fuck. It's not great because it's entire. It's the entire thing. And how hot is it? No. It's tremendously hot outside. 95 with like 98% humidity. Inside, maybe 35 degrees. No, they crank the AC. <laughs> they give you a blanket when you get in. I, so I, it's that a hot blanket. at fucking 11 p.m. when I got on my first bus. And they were like with shorts. They're like, no, you can't wear that in here. I'm like, what are you talking about? Why? And they're like, nah. And they made me put pants on, which I didn't get until the fucking started blasting. And then for four hours, it's like, you can see your breath. Legitimately, you can see your breath. That's Not 35 nuts. degrees. It's like 45, 50 degrees. Yeah, and then like they stop for a rest, and you fucking run out and warm up a little. It's I don't know why they do it. Why did none of them complain? They just go. Like, with there's it. levels, just like well, anyway. So we get there. They're just staring at us, and we're like, "All right, this is like." But like, uh, uh, I guess we must have learned the word for like sleep. And then one guy gets up, goes behind the counter, and was like just looking at us from there. <laughs> like, um, oh, we're two two rooms. There's three dudes, and we're like, we, you know, caught, caught, and um, and he goes, uh, and he's like, no, <laughs> we're like, what do you mean, <laughs> two rooms? And we're like, the rooms, you know, we just can't point at us. They're like, it's the room. We want to sleep here. Us sleep here. He was just staring, and then he like left and went talk to those other two guys, and then he he made a phone call. He got on his phone, and he was just like talking for a while, and then um. And then some other guy comes in from outside. Damn, I haven't thought about this in a long time. Some other guy comes in from outside with broken, broken English. And he goes, you, can't, you cannot stay here. And we're like, what do you mean? It's a hotel, right? And he goes, yeah, it's a hotel, but you, no, you can't stay here. <laughs> we're like, why? What are you talking about? None of this makes sense. Is there another hotel? And they're like, you can't stay here. And he just kept saying, you can't stay here. And then at some point, they must've made more phone calls and talked, the, the hotel phone rang. And it was somebody from Yangon, from the capital. And she was like, you're not allowed to stay there. There's no foreigners allowed to stay there. And we're like, well, we got off the bus. And she goes, you have to turn around. Where'd you come from? The South. She goes, turn around, go South. We just came from the South. We're going North. She goes, no, the next bus North isn't coming today. And you can't stay there. And so then we did a three-day hike. Now, do you know why you can't stay no, there? No, I don't. I didn't know about the fucking Rohingya until way after I got home. And I was telling people how much fun I had in Myanmar and this culture. It wasn't as bad as it is now. But they're like, oh, I bet you had fun while they were wiping out mothers and children. And you're like, nah, I didn't see any of that. <laughs> they wouldn't let us. Yeah, I just saw a lot of like you know, weird foot volleyball. But like, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, they wouldn't even let us. What do you mean? They, they hide it. So they had a capital. They had all the protests during the capital years, years, decades before. And um they got sick of uh, of uh, all the fucking protests. So they just moved the capital in the middle of the country to the middle of nowhere. And so then people, they didn't want to go all the way there to right, protest. Yeah. They changed their name. It was Burma. And then the military is like, we got a bad name. We're just, it's now Myanmar. That was like 20 years ago. <laughs> it's uh, the yeah, same country. I... Yeah. They just took over. So how do you get out of there then? Okay. So I was like, what about a, 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 a monastery? We can sleep at a monastery which they're supposed to take you in. We slept in one, we were hiking. One day you stayed at like a village, another day you stayed at a monastery in cold, but like 
everyone bundles up. So I was like, I know I can just go there and they'll let me like sleep on the floor. And she just started laughing. She was like, no way. You have to turn around. What are you talking about? And I was like, I know I'm allowed to sleep in the monastery. I thought I'd just start crying on the phone. It wasn't a real cry, but I let myself get there. I, I was like, in that moment, you know, all the acting classes in LA kicked in. I got, look, we can't. Meanwhile, I could have just hired a cab for like 250 bucks to take us all the way back there. But you got to live like a backpacker. You got to live like everybody else. What's your back? What's your budget daily? The, the, whoever's budget. A, the, in our group, whoever their budget is, that's my budget. So if I'm like, if I'm like, I like staying at hostels because it's like it's more social. Um, like I don't have to, but it's so much more social. You find out stuff to do. You make friends. There's other like real travelers. Nobody makes friends at hotels. They're not robbing you left and right. And no, there and shit, no. For real. So you might you might get your stuff stolen. Yeah. But again, I got a parachute of I I'm not trying to travel for a year on, on 10 grand, you know? Yeah. I could, I could, you know that song Common People by Pulp? I can always call my dad, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the cockroaches on their wall. Just, that, that was me, man. But you don't want to make many feel bad, so you don't want to be like, we're all going to steak dinner and get weird, right? you know? But if I was like in a place for one day on my way to somewhere else, like I had to get on a plane, I'm staying in like a nice hotel. I'm not going to meet anybody. I want a real shower. What's your... Where does this come from? Is there anyone in your family like this, the, the need to get away and want to see different things? Because you don't no, just go, but you don't go to Italy and you don't go, you know, you really, yeah. you, you take I, the Great Wall I was telling you about before. I, I remember your- Dude, uh, China, it opened up for me. It was the most foreign place I've ever been to. Is that to. the first place you that went That was the first China? one, 2014. That great, was that the Great Wall? That was on that trip. Yeah. Yeah, Des Bishop was like a Chinese comedian then. Um, and he was like, I'll set you up with a trip there. Not much. And then you just go up there forever. And it was the whole, but the whole, all of Beijing and Shanghai was just like, it's just so different. You can't, they don't, they don't take the bones out of their Chinese food. They say, just yeah, chop it up. Me, yeah. So you're eating and you're like looking at it and like, what the fuck? There's bones in the thing. It's supposed to, it's pieces. They just chop it with a mallet and then fucking cook it and serve it. And you're like, what? And I'm looking at it and this lady comes by and she brings me a fork because I was in Shanghai. I was a tourist. I'm like, no, I know how to do it. I'm staring at your food, <laughs> not the ability to pick it up. Yeah, it was nuts. You would walk by. So if you leave like the center area in Shanghai, that was the first, first place. Dude, I walked with Andy, uh, with um, with Turner Sparks. He picked me up from the airport in Shanghai. I've never been, I've been to Europe a little bit, Israel, but like it's all little Americas, you know? Yeah. It's all pretty much the same. I get what you're saying. Slight difference. You go to Australia, the birds' beaks are different, but yeah. So we're going down an alley. We get out of the airport. Airport looks the same as any. We get out, we're going down an alley, you see all the people. You're talking about the Chinese bikini, which is just you go like this and you walk around with just like that. And it's just like, that's what dudes, dudes do all the time. So we're walking and we see some guy, some beggar. And he goes, uh, don't look at that. Don't look at that, by the way. And um, zero chance I'm not going to look at that yeah. at that point. Right. <laughs> there was a chance I wouldn't yeah. have looked at it. But no way when you tell me not to look at it. There's no way. No. So I looked at it. So this dude was on the ground, his leg, um, yellowish spot, this wide, right? Sorry. Then inside that purple there, and then inside that exposed bone. Oh, yeah. fuck. And it's just sitting out on the street He's just like out that? There. He's just out there begging from nickels or whatever. Oh, fuck. Yeah, straight bone. Bone. Yeah, it was out. He was, he was, yeah, he's done. You got to yeah. assume he's, he didn't. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. 2014. <laughs> that guy didn't survive COVID. No way did that guy <laughs> no get seen way. first at the hospital Hell in fucking no. Shanghai. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. We deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something we take every day. Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin is formulated with high-quality nutrients in bioavailable forms your body can actually use. And what you won't find... Sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, and artificial colorants. Plus, the fresh taste and delayed release capsule design makes taking your vitamins easy. You guys hear me talk about Ritual all the time. I'm a proud Ritual taker. Take it every day. And I can tell you, even with my taste messed up, I could taste the minty fresh in it. It's pretty nice. It comes right in my mailbox every month. You can put it on pause. You can start, stop, whenever you want. Ritual is made traceable, so you'll always know what nutrients you're taking and where they come from thanks to Ritual's one-of-a-kind visible supply chain. 
Rituals designed with your life stage in mind. It's now available for women, men, and teens. Ritual multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support different life stages. Ritual makes healthy habits easy. Your multivitamins are delivered, like I told you, right to your door every month with free shipping always. You can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription anytime. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, They'll refund your first order. Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash honeydew to start your ritual today. There's so much going on in the world right now, whether it's stuff you're excited about, like the Night Pants Nation tour, get your tickets at ryansickler.com, or stuff you'd rather not think about, like not going out on tour, get your tickets available at ryansickler.com. You can't always control the vibes out there, but you can always control the vibes in your head with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Look, I listen to podcasts. I listen to the Honeydew. We all should be listening to in your Raycons and music. I make playlists for me, my daughter, and I love my Raycons. I travel with them. I exercise with them. Uh, so whether you use them to pump up, wind down, work or work out, Raycons are my go-to for on-the-go audio. And the new everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever with an improved rubber oil look and feel and optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. These are impressive before you even start listening. Like, That little tip, they've got little ones you can, I don't know if you've done this yet, you can try them, fit them in there and everything. They fit tight. They hold in. They don't fall out of my ear. Even when I bend over and stuff, tilt to the side, nothing. I still wear some old pairs every now and then, snag on my my kitchen counters and everything else. All right, so you get three new sound profiles to make sure everything you're listening to sounds its best with just the right amount of bass. There's a pure mode for podcast listening like the Honeydew blues instrumental there's a balance mode again podcast listening like the honeydew rock heavy rock and metal and then you got your bass mode for hip-hop edm reggae etc right there's also an all-new awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings instead raycons offer eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life there's also a built-in mic and you can take calls on your earbuds at the press of a button raycons start at half the price of other premium audio brands but they sound just as good. And Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. Right now, Honeydew listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash honeydew. That's buyraycon.com slash honeydew to save 15% on your Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash honeydew. Now, let's get back to the do. So anyway, but then you just like, you'd like walk, you see a grill, there's just meat of some kind, and you're just like, I don't want give them the equivalent of like 60 cents. And they give you like two um, kebabs and you're just like, if you don't like it, just fucking chuck it. You know, it's just yeah. so fun. It was just so fucking weird there. Old men sweeping with like palm leaf brooms, just like hired by the government. Like everyone is, I guess. Oh, really? I guess so. They have capital. I don't really, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know about their system, but they have capitalism, but also like, I don't know. Everybody works. I don't know how it works. You've never care. been robbed or. Oh, so they told me it was the safest city you'll ever go to. They said women can pass out drunk on the street. And no one will touch them. It's, and once they told me that, that's what unleashed it. They told me that. And I was like, wait, what? And it was the Americans and whatever Canadians who live there telling me that. And I was like, oh, well, then I have nothing to worry. So then it's like, get out there. If you're telling me no, there's no okay, violent crime. So you crime. were you were a little hesitant at first, and oh, then yeah. and then once you hear that, you're in. Yeah, and then they were like, "You're the first one we brought out here that was like, no, no, I'm good today. Let's go, I'll, you know, I'll just get out there." He said Schubert was always like, "Come on, you need to like, help me," and yeah. I'm like, "I'll just point to a fucking menu item and whatever they bring, it's fine." Yeah, it costs nothing out there. Nothing costs anything out there. It's all a, a, like twelve cents to thirty cents. So if you don't like something, just fucking chuck it, man. <laughs> you're not committed yeah, to anything. True. Yeah, yeah. I learned the word for beef, um, uh, Rio, I think, something like that. I doubt that's still it from that many years ago. But like um, Neo, maybe something like that. But anyway, and then it'd be like, ask for beef, and then which and like which one? I'm like, I don't know, number three. <laughs> it's just fun. I don't know. It's great. It's so much fun out there, especially when nothing's going to hurt you. So Yeah, yeah that's, I, I mean, where do you hear that? Yeah. Where do you hear that? Music festivals, that's it. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, not the Woodstock ones and shit we're hearing about. Uh huh. Not see the those fucking documentary. You see that the bathing and shit. Yeah. Um. So, have you been robbed or anything? So, no, never. But never. if I did, I'd just be like, it, "You won't cost that much. You got to go put yeah, new underwear and new socks." Point. But where are you going to get stuff like that? Stores. There's just stores. It's not jungles. Oh, you're not going out to remote places. 
No. What, so I was in Cambodia once in my flip flops, whatever, and they just don't have an 11 and a half. So those, my flip flops were done. Oh, the they, size. Yeah. And they were size. like, no, they're like, try to fit into a 10. Um, and you're like, no, what do you mean? <laughs> like, it's my feet are way over the edge. And they're like, it'll stretch. And I'm like, not the, not the under, stretch. the top part stretches, not like the flip flops never stretch. <laughs> But you just can't find an 11 and a half. And then when I finally found one, it was like a knockoff version of like a, I don't know, some surf brand. But immediately the thing started like, break. so you just got to staple it. Like you got to make shit work. It's fun to like have things to overcome, you know, like little like problems. I just had to find glue and glue up my, my flip flops. Anyway, so we're in this fucking place. They're all staring at us, you know, and they're like, she was like, you can't, I, I don't know what to tell you, you can't stay there. I'm like, well, we're not going south. And she goes, well, hold on, let me figure it out. Like, don't go anywhere, but also, like, you can't stay here. So we go to the market. As we go down to the market, um, my buddy from Seattle, they're just, like, he's stopping the market. It's just, like, like card after card after card after card, you know, rows of that. And they, it's like the wave in baseball. They just stop everything. As soon as this white guy comes, you can just see them all look up and, like, what the? Until he's about gone and then back to their fucking selling whatever it is. And he just shut it down. And then the line formed to take pictures. Pictures. Yeah. I got a hat there that I still have, a sweet ass hat that I didn't know what it meant in Burmese. It says chill out. Fucking That's nice. perfect. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Um anyway, we go back and uh and this lady's like, All right, there's a man who's in another hotel. She gets back on the phone and he's willing to take you in at his hotel. We're like, Okay, yeah, but like what do you mean take us in? It's not like <laughs> it's a yeah. hotel dude. Like We're pay oh, him you're for on it. the underground railroad yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And she goes, but he's doing it out of the goodness of his heart. Like, he's not supposed to. And we're like, uh, uh, all right. He goes, so do you understand that? That the guy's doing you a favor? And we're like, should we pay him more? He goes, no, but that's like, this is our culture to help people. It is. That's what they always said. Like, it's part of their culture to help people. So he's helping you. I'm like, okay. So we go there. He takes us in. We get two rooms. Two reds in one. One better than another. Um. And then we go out, we're like, hey, there's a, on the, on the map, there's a, there's a thing called statue. So let's go see it, it's right near an army base. So we're looking at the statue of just like an old army guy. After like 20, 30 minutes, we're taking some pictures, about four, one guy in front, four guys behind him with machine guns come out and then just come right, and we're like, interesting, and they just walk right out of the army barracks and then right up to us and we're like, what are you guys doing here? And we're like- they, They're speaking English, yeah, fine. Yeah, the front guy, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? And I was like, well, we're, we're just like, we're on our way to, to up north. We stopped in for the night. He was like, why are you taking pictures of any of this? And we're like, I don't know, it's just a statue. We just thought of it. He's like, let me see your phone. Delete, delete, delete. Immediately. Not his phone, it's his camera. Um, he goes, not allowed to take pictures of any of this. Like, okay, we're sorry. He goes, where are your passports? And we're like, but they're back in the room. It's like, let's go get them. And so it was about a mile walk through the city with these four machine gun guys to your backs yeah fuck are people looking at you extra now that you're white and you got machine guns to your back you would think but no <laughs> they were not they looking. mind their fucking business yeah that's that don't look don't look don't look yeah and yeah you yeah look, right they you don't wanna, look you want to look so bad because yeah. they're white but also yeah, it's, yeah, it's but the also, army it's the controlling yeah. army it's like fuck come on I, it's entrapment almost you're you're, you're going to parade a white out here? A white. And ask me not to look? You tested my loyalties. Oh, shit. <laughs> Bro. They're taking you back to the dude that's doing you the favor yeah. to get your passport. Yes. Yeah. So all this later, I understand. So the foreigners are not allowed to stay there. The army has control of everything. There are rebel groups that are fighting back against the army. And then there's different factions who are siding with different rebel groups. One rebel group said, if you give us some level of freedom, Army, we'll side with you and we'll try to get these other rebel groups to stop fighting you. So they're like, go between groups. Anyway, bottom line is they don't want us there at all. And each rebel group is like really good at protecting their own area. So anyway, showing the passport, takes off. Don't come back to the statue, which I didn't. We didn't. We were like, okay, I guess we learned our lesson. Uh, everybody's having fun now at this point. It's all cool again. We're playing like fucking, uh, they have this weird, uh, volleyball kick volleyball game. Where they just like kick this ball up yeah. wicker. Um, yeah, it's sick to see, but like, uh, They're constantly f uh, like doing bicycle kicks and yeah, shit. Bicycle, yeah. And they get their leg and they're up so and good they get yeah. down on yeah, it. And it's good. It's not a full size net. You've seen it. Yeah. I've it's seen crazy. it online. Yeah. 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 
My buddy took this picture that I got to blow up. It's it's fucking a perfect one of it. Um, damn. But uh, yeah, so we played that for a while. Everybody loved playing with the whites. They thought it was so fucking fun. Like, come on, oh my god. Look, they're trying it. Yeah, they're my buddy was from Newcastle. It. Yeah, my buddy was a big Newcastle fan. So he was like, he was good. The rest of us like, you like fucking try. You know, you get one up and they run yeah. after it. They know how to do it like, where it goes behind them and they're catching on the flat of their foot. It's nutty. I saw a guy do a one on three in Yangon. He fought three other, fought. He played three other guys and beat them. And, and beat them. And they were good. This guy was a straight monkey, dude. He was just like, he was small. He had just a diaper on and that's it. Nah. Yeah, a diaper, like a cloth diaper. Yeah. Yeah. A diaper. Yeah. I'll show you a picture. I have a picture of it. Um, I mean, it was just like tied cloth, like, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Anyway, we're having fun. Go eat. Um, uh, do You know what? So if they're not allowed to keep us there, that's why I'm thinking right now. She's like, that guy is putting himself in danger by having you there. I thought, anyway, yeah. I Fucking thought, Harriet Tubman over there. For yeah, <laughs> yeah, he might have got in serious trouble oh, us bringing no. the army over to him. <laughs> yeah, he might have been like, what? The last thing I want, I'm on the other side of town. You brought the army here. <laughs> you brought the and army. <laughs> I told them I was disobeying your rules. Are you, yes, you could not have done a worse job. It's like when someone trusts you with a secret and you tell yeah, the yeah, person. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's the one you told me not to tell. <laughs> <laughs> like, who else like that's the only one up. damn well that guy's been killed for sure <laughs> sorry dude's widow uh i apologize for oh damn hopefully sell the hotel fuck i got terrible food poisoning that night too had to barf shit combo on a on a no toilet toilet where you just put your feet down and there's a hole oh, in the middle the hole so you gotta put Wait, your legs so you're projectile vomiting forward and shitting at the same time. yeah you gotta like yeah you gotta <laughs> lean and then be like guess which one guess which one and then like put your knees on that fucking shit floor piss floor and like, oh god kept going. Man, dude. you have these pills you gotta take but you gotta keep it down so it's like when am i gonna start barfing oh god that was a terrible one Anyway, we stayed there, got better, whatever that drug is you're supposed to take. Um, do not doxycyclona, azithromycin. Never go to these places without a Z pack, which is three pills of azithromycin. Take one, calms you down. The next day, take another one. And as you start bubbling up again, food poisoning is you're going to get it if you're out there. Yeah. But just like try to minimize and it. And dry you out. Yeah, you get, yeah. Like Nick Mullen used to have a joke about how diarrhea used to kill you. So people used to be like, it's not funny. <laughs> people are dying of this but like uh yeah and then the next one so then we left and i fucking that got the he had a key i fucking took it with me by accident no yeah. you did. <laughs> i found it on the train God. i found it on the train in the next city and i'm like ah oh, fuck <laughs> i mean he really helped us out again i'm sorry widow of that guy right for outside fucking doing house, everything the army showing up yeah i don't know it's just fun it's just fun being free and trying to like just figure shit out. Well, what about hiking in South America? Like those are fun. What do you like? You but don't you purposely use hikes in general? What? No phone. Didn't you go no phone and in, everything in one Southeast time? Asia? That's you what did. it was. I, I called Uber. I, then I threw when as soon as it was like yeah we got you threw my phone in the drawer and then went out with my shit and just like I locked myself out of my uh, email my um on purpose yeah on purpose Facebook and everything else Instagram I just gave it to a friend I just went like this yeah, I remember like, Abrams reset. was answering for you and stuff like that wasn't some he? of the yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like contact him if you needed about yeah. this um what was that like how long were you without that kind of uh three and a half months maybe months it yeah. was that long what oh, was yeah. that like that's like back living in the 80s again it was the most freeing thing i've ever done there was no connection there was n there was nothing clogging your brain there, there was just nothing other than what am i going to do today uh, uh, some loose plans in the, in the but like not, nobody's bothering with gossip it, it, it's just it's just so like free you're just floating. You're like, I'm going to go to that city. So I, I I got to this city in me. I mean, I say me because my first like crazy place I went to was Myanmar after China. That was the first like hosteling I did. And that was the first I was like just out there with like no connection. So landed, went to Yangon for a while. And then I was going to go to um, like a temple city or this other city up north. And the temple city bus had already left. So I'm like, I'll go to the city up north. Get there. And I say, I want to I catch the 
this old train that everybody wants to take. One of the tourist things to do, get a ticket on this old train that takes you all and takes us over this massive aqueduct, supposed to be really cool. Can I get there? Like sold out tomorrow. And I was like, fuck. So I didn't even slip, took a nap at the hostel and I just went south to the temple city. But the freedom of being able to go like, then I'll just switch my plans. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're just constantly zero responsibility. Yeah. I mean, you're a dad. Yeah. So you have way more than All I do right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's like, what I'm saying. You're doing it right. Like if I could pack up and just bust out, I'd go. Yeah. I'd go. Segura one time when I was moving to New York, he was like, uh, he goes, I wish I could move to New York. And I was like, why don't you, buddy? Like he was doing possibly worse than me then. <laughs> if that's possible, that might have been. <laughs> he was already headlining. Nah, he had to be ahead of me then. But it was close. Anyway. We were on the same level. And um, and he was like, yeah, I wish I could. Uh, and I was like, you can't. What do you mean? You're a comic. Just You can you can just go. He goes, nah, I'm fucking married. It's before he had kids for sure. He's like, I'm married. I don't know. I got to move two people. And I was like, fuck. And then I put in my head, I'm like, I got to start making people like Tom Segura jealous. You know? I gotta, I gotta, I'm not going to play Xbox all day and just do yeah. nothing. And like, oh, look at the fucking single guy. So like, you know, live for that. And so with that mindset, it's like, oh, just try shit. It's so fun out there. So you get out there and you're like, there's nothing to do. I can go any direction. I can leave but the country. But are you also going into like these hikes without any real experience or anything? None. In Myanmar, after some country, somebody's like, I heard after that temple city, somebody's like, I heard there's a three-day hike you can go on. And it's guided? Yeah. It's, okay. they, have, they get a guide in that town and they'll take you. And it's it's three days with the same eight people, eight tourists, and this guy who led us. And it's it's just like, I've never done anything like that. You'd hike with your shit on you. And just go, and then the and where first, do you sleep? You put first night in a tents? in a in a no. Some place took us in, so it was like oh. a big, a big thatch wood room, and then connected to another big thatch roof room, and the roof went over both. There's a fire in the other one, and the smoke heats up everything, and makes oh, you okay. not able to breathe all night long. I was going to say yeah. it's all carbon dioxide or whatever. Yeah, but that's what your heat is. Mm -hmm. And um, went out to go take a piss before the sun rose, and that was. But even Zion, that was the best stars I've ever seen up in the mountains really? of, in Myanmar. And then the moon came and washed it all away. It was it was just like bright. Like you get out and you're just like, what? You You've never so seen any like that. Yeah. yeah. Then hiked all day the next day. Um, put some water, whatever, go through a, a village or two or a town. There's some soccer game in the mountains. It's just so weird and like, I don't know, out there. Bought these like cigars they, they sell you and i was like i just want like two and they were like no here's like 200 it's like a pack of them it's like and i'm like no, no i just want to like try one and, like it's 20 cents for the 200 <laughs> you're like yeah i'll just give them out God. Um, yeah but this hike was so cool we ended up doing that same group met in the alps and we're like let's go hiking again so then there was one in ecuador same thing like a four-day hike from one place um, to another. So you're coming home and then going back to the separate, or the whole time you're doing? You're staying over there and going from staying in the Asia mountains. to Ecuador. Oh no, 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 no! Those okay. are all separate trips. Asia's one trip. Went to went to um, me and my friend in Austria. Those guys again, like another trip. That was just went to Munich. Went started in Austria. Then you take a ski lift up the mountain and then you just stay up there for five six days. Just like you hike from hostel hut to hostel hostel hut. You have like a backpack on you, all your shit. Are you ever running into any kind of wildlife or anything? Some gophers that scream. That's it? That scream. Yeah, there's nothing up there. It's dead. It's out. It's so high up there, and yeah. some birds. But yeah, it's fun and freeing and just like out in nature and stuff. So we did the same one in Ecuador. We were already there. We heard about one. Go up to this big crater lake. So it's like day after day. There's hiker hostels up there, separate rooms or whatever. But they give you wood and a and a, and a fire metal fireplace. Some nice, some really dank, but like there's a route that people have taken. So it's me, uh, my partner, and this other guy that I met once um, who was like from there, a, a white dude, but he like spent time there and he was there and he was like, and we were like, all right, we're bored, it's quarantine, so it was just the two of us and our dog, you know? So we're like, yeah, come along, you know? So <sighs> we start hiking, we buy enough equipment to go, it's cold and shit, but it's also hot during the day and it's the mountains, so. I'd say late first day, um, six to eight hours hiking every day, probably six six hours into the That's first day. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. The first day I was think was only five. So it was like four hours in. I realized I hated that other guy. <laughs> 
<laughs> the new dude. Yeah, he was an, he was annoying. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah, he talked about himself a lot. It was annoying. Um, but I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to ruin it. I didn't tell my partner that. And was just like, suck it up because we're not going anywhere. The car's back there. We're gonna get a ride when we get to where we're going. This crater lake back. You know, that'll take a few hours, but this is taking through the mountains and, and it's days. So I'm like, I can't, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing, I can't say shut the fuck up. Right. Quit talking, bragging with every fucking breath. But I don't want to say anything. So. <sighs> and do you tell on these walks and talks, are you telling them what you do? Yeah, he knows me. He does. Yeah. He knows who you are. Like we, We've met. Yeah. You know, we've met. He we knows had, you're a comic and yeah, all that shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but so it's like, what am I, I, there's nothing I can do. We're doing this. I've known by, it's like, we're not walking off, so you got to make the best of it. You know, that's a rule for sure. Make the best of it. If you fucking miss the plane or the bus, just like take a minute. You can mourn. You can beat yourself up for a yeah, second. Yeah. Don't just be like, who cares? Like, let yourself care. But then like, now what? Yeah. All right. So I'm in some town. This will be cool. I'll stay here for an extra day. Let's see if there's a barbecue. You know, something. So I'm not going to tell my part. I'm not going to soil this for anybody else. So. Um, day two is acid day. We we're like, let's drop some acid and walk, which I was like, okay. And walk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much acid do you take? A gel tab, which I've never taken a gel tab before. Yeah, I've never even heard of that one. Yeah. Good idea, though. My dog's loving it up there, by the way. Yeah. Just run. I mean, if we hiked for six hour a day, he was doing double everything. Run it off. Anytime he sees like a, a deer or a fucking frog, just run. He's loving it. God damn. Was, he's never been that happy. For many people in the U.S. concerned about the cost of health insurance, there are no good options. So you either go uninsured or you pay through the nose for a high deductible plan with questionable coverage, all because of a broken health insurance system. It's like being stuck with an outdated cable TV plan and not knowing about Netflix. Introducing Crowd Health. It isn't health insurance. It's a better way to pay medical expenses. Crowd Health is a community of people who are tired of paying for a broken system, a place where you can get a simple, flexible, and affordable way to pay for your health care. Being in the crowd health community can save hundreds of dollars monthly and put thousands of dollars back in your pocket. Membership as a monthly subscription is flexible. You can start or stop when it's convenient for you. Crowd health lowers your monthly health care costs, and you can see any doctor you want. It's simple. Scan bills and throw them away. Crowd Health takes it from there. 100% of your monthly membership pays for actual health care costs, helping the whole Crowd Health community stay healthy while keeping more money in your pocket. Crowd Health is able to offer amazing prices because of its community of health conscious members, but they have an amazing offer just for my listeners. Get your first six months for just $99 per month. That's a savings of almost 50% versus their standard pricing and a lot less than one of those crappy high deductible plans. Just go to joincrowdhealth.com slash 99 and enter code HONEYDEW at sign up. That's joincrowdhealth.com slash 99, promo code HONEYDEW. Crowd Health is not health insurance. It's a community-powered alternative. Term and conditions may apply. Look, the cost of rent these days is ridiculous, and buying your first home can feel daunting, unrealistic, confusing. I've never done it. I'm not a homeowner. I still rent. I go out here looking in L.A., people paying over asking price with cash. Don't worry about fixing it up. We'll take it. Now nah, we'll buy that perfectly good house. We're going to destroy it and then build a mansion on top of it. All right, it's so competitive. That's why I highly recommend listening to the How to Buy a Home podcast. The How to Buy a Home podcast is essentially a free playbook of the do's and don'ts to buying your first home, no matter if you're clueless on how to start or deep in the mess looking for clarity. Host David Sedoni is an industry insider with years of experience who actually cares about first-time home buyers and wants to help them beat a system that is rigged against them. He answers questions like, do I really need to put 20% down? Answer is no. Most people only need to put 3.5%, and David will tell you how. Look, I talked to him on the phone, okay? He wasn't like other people, just, you know, this, that. He really is talking to you and giving you advice on how to do it, all right? I'm actually going to talk to him, have a consultation with him, because I want to know. He's like, you can do it. For what you pay in rent, you can buy a home. Trust me, talk to me, listen to the show. So I'm telling you, 
If you're thinking about buying a home next month, next year, or in five years, listen to the How to Buy a Home podcast today. This is your best bet to avoid being one of those horror stories and get an insider playbook with clear, no BS, real information. Find How to Buy a Home wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, let's get back to the Duke. <sighs> anyway, ass is kicking in. We're fine. It's fucking loopy. I can handle my shit. So I, I expect everyone else to handle their shit as well. And if you Fair can't, enough. you fucking say something. <laughs> yeah, Just yeah. fucking, hey, I need help here. Whatever. Don't, but I, remember when we went to that theme park? Yeah. Did you OD or did you not feel it? Didn't feel it at Didn't all. Didn't feel it. Yeah. yeah. Edibles the don't banana work bread. for me. Yeah. Your neighbors got fucked up yeah, on that banana did. bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, you did. I've told the story about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were fine. Yeah, edibles don't fucking work on me. Diaz. Diaz gave me one one time. He gave me the star of death, and I would eat it. And then he's like, you didn't eat that fucking – I'm like, I ate it. You got cameras. Go back and look. I ate it right on camera. And yeah. then I'd come the next time, and it was uh, two stars of death. So I eat two stars of death and nothing. He didn't believe you. So then he comes to um, – remember when we had – ATC was at that uh, Raleigh Studios. Remember that? Mm-hmm. So he came there, and he's like, eat this in front of me again. And I just sit there. I chew it. And he's like, show me a tongue. And I swallow it. And he then, does not believe you. And at the end of it, he like it was like he was upset. He's like, it's, it's, it really sucks. Those don't do something to you. I go, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably have to do like three of them, and then I'll get so fucking far out. I don't want him. You know what I mean? Like, that's not the point. So I go back one more time. This shit, I don't know what the fuck he gave me. This shit looked like t- black tar heroin. I was like... Yeah, let me use the bathroom real quick. I threw that <laughs> motherfucker to the door, and I was like, nah. He took it as a that. personal <laughs> challenge. Yeah. yeah. He might have switched like, drugs on you. <laughs> yeah. He might have been like, oh, this is, is. going to do it. Let's, I'll yeah. smoke with you, but that motherfucker is out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. And I don't think it even stuck to my finger. I was like, I'm good on this thing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you should, you should, yeah. You should yeah. not trust Diaz when he gets like, no. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to challenge you on this. Yeah, they're, they don't really, they don't work. I give them to everybody. That's crazy. Away, I've met yeah. one other person like you. I believe you. Yeah, now, I, I mean, Segura will do his 10 milligram shit or whatever. He'll give me the 20 and I forget I even took it. I forget wow. I even took it. Yeah. You, you might be an X-Man. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> what if that was your X-Man power? <laughs> That'd be bad. <laughs> I just want to be, I just want to swim underwater. I get like, to be at the academy and uh, shit. Like, that's all you get. What you do? Uh, give, him, give him all your fucking <laughs> weed, man. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he won't get buried. <laughs> Flame's like, that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> Hold your edibles. Anyway. So, kicking in, having a great time in nature. I mean, the ass is perfect. Um, Midway through that day, my partner's like grumbles about something, and I was like, we just looked at each other, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and it was just like, we made that connection that you can make with a loved one, and it's just like, I'm not talking about it, but it's just a... It finally got there. Uh-huh. What you'd been feeling. And it's like, <laughs> whenever it, like come, it came like an hour later, wait, which... So, then in the hotel, in not the hotel, the hot, hot care hostel, that one, top of whatever... Um, it was like, hey, he's annoying, right? <laughs> like, yeah, he's annoying. And it was like, okay, we can't. We're still on this for two more days. We can't. Save it all and we'll deal with it later. But like we can't it's gonna be horrible for us. If we say anything or if we really start to hate him, if yeah. we talk too much shit, then we're not gonna even enjoy anything he does, you know? So it's like sure he's braggadocious, but like we can still enjoy moments. And that evaporated completely the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just. What a, was it? Do you remember anything that, that sticks in your head? So, the line I mean, from him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we go in an overlook, right? So where it's like they were in the mountains. So sometimes there's a beautiful view. Sometimes not. There's a beautiful view, and we go down there, and like you look, and you're like, wow. And it's like you sit there for a while, and like this is just amazing, you know. And it's just, it's just like when you get a bluff, it's just like it takes your breath away, man. It's awesome. We're looking. We're like, that's cool. Let's walk back. And then he goes out there, and then we're like walking and talking, sitting down, smoking a J probably, or, or getting water, or whatever. And he comes back, he's, did you guys um, see that overlook? I'm like, yeah, we both just did. Yeah, for sure. Whatever you're about to say, we also saw it. Right. Because yeah. yeah. you're like, I found the best. Like, we were just there. Like, we came around from the other way. So he was like, I would describe that feeling as orgasmic. And we're like, <laughs> C- come on. I would come on. I'd shove this motherfucker off the side. You would have, dude. You would not have held your tongue on this guy. You'd be like, no one's going to suspect. I'd be like, you know what, guys? I'm going to apologize in advance right now. Listen, motherfucker. (laughs) God damn, it was annoying. 
We're not shut. We're in nature. I've never All been in day nature. Like that. And you usually you're like I could I would welcome a talk at the end of the day because we've been quiet, enjoying the birds and the bees and the insects and the noise and the babbling. Just blah 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 blah. I'm like, ah. Oh. And so then what I do is when I get anyone, I don't know how you are. If there's like maybe a young comic or a fan who's like wants it too bad. So this helps me not to bother anybody famous, you know? I just mm -hmm. walk away. If I'm not gonna talk to them, I, I don't wanna like annoy anybody. So I'm just walking away. Anybody I like really respect, I'm like, and then I just go. If they want a conversation, and it's like maybe you just got off stage and you're like, I don't wanna talk right now, but you can't say I don't wanna talk right now. So you just kind of get quiet and you th hope you're quiet will make them like match fucking, you know, emotions with you. And it does sometimes, and then sometimes they wanna fill in that silence. So they just talk more and more and more. And that makes me shrivel up more and more and more. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just shriveling up because I can't talk back because I don't fucking care. <sighs> he's such a fuck. So Ben was playing with like a, with like a, uh, he saw a frog and he was going over there. He's a vegan and shit like that. So he's like looking at this frog and we're like, hey, Ben, look at the frog. And he goes, no, he's gonna kill it. <laughs> like, dude, first of all, that's goddamn nature. Second of all, Ben is not. He's gonna play with this fucking yeah. frog. Relax. Also, one fucking frog down. Calm down if it happens. <laughs> one down. Yeah, what do you want him yeah, to practice on a baby right. for yeah. the first weird thing he's seen? Let him see the frog. <laughs> if he comes back with a frog in his mouth, that's just a new trick. Uh, anyway. So the acid was the hardest part because, okay. I'm sorry. I got it wrong. Acid was the last day. Okay. Acid was the last day. Does it make it worse? No, because we were even thinking like, maybe we shouldn't take this acid this last day. And we were like, yeah, for sure let's do that because then the next day would be hiking around the crater. So last day is getting to the top. Second day is like a long, long down and up, whatever. We'd already decided we're, this the acid is going to help us. We talked about set and setting, you know, where like maybe this isn't it. We're like, let's just laugh about it emotionally. We can fucking communicate through the fucking heavens mm -hmm. and we'll like deal with it together. Bandit doesn't know. Bandit loves everybody. So... <sighs> So the last day, he decides to take his shoes off. Um, it gets him really wet. It was raining, uh, a lot of it. So we had like ponchos, but it was raining for a lot of it, which makes it miserable. It's just not fun. You try to find shelter for a while, but like at some point, like you gotta get going because you're in nature, you're in nothing. So you gotta get to that hiker hostel. Right. Meanwhile, every once in a while, like once per day, a fucking old Ecuadorian couple with just fucking 70 groceries on their head would just fucking lap us. For real? Yeah, just like, hello, we'd like talk for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tony would be like, would be like, say something to him like in Spanish. Just, uh -huh. And then just like, anyway, see ya. And then just go like, how the fuck? Because they would say how long it was supposed to take. And we're like, we're doing double this. They're talking about Ecuadorians. Blah, 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 blah. They don't even rest ever. They'll go two rest stops. Anyway, we're on acid, he takes his shoes off, and he goes, it's really great, the, f the feel of the fucking soil you know, on your feet, which I get. I've been to festivals where people have done that. They'd be like, these shoes, I don't need them anymore. Great, whatever. You guys should do it. Nah, but you go for it. I like my fucking waterproof Merrells. <laughs> you know? <laughs> They're dry on the inside. I've hiked a long time. They're dry. My feet are dry. And he's like, I get it. You, you try to hike with sneakers. That was your mistake. He just keeps pushing it. God, oh, it feels so good. Take your shoes off. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. It's not going to happen. You should do it. It's like, okay, you keep saying that, but I, I don't want to in any way. Eventually, he's like, hey, I, I'm not I'm not taking my shoes off. So there's no way. There's literally no way you should stop saying it. Well, I'm just enjoying it. It's like, oh, fine. An hour later, he's like, dude, I can't feel my toes. It's cold. And I've been walking on rocks for far too long. I can't feel my toes. I'm like, put your fucking shoes back on. That's the number one reason you can't feel your toes. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you're looking for reasons. <laughs> it's cold and rainy and rocky, and I get it. It was sandy back there three hours ago. Right. Why are you yeah. sticking to this? Right. <laughs> the trails are hard to, to, to read. They're not well marked, um, especially after COVID. They probably stopped maintaining them. We get a bit lost. We don't really know where we are. We're on some other trail to who knows where. We have a map from the last hostel, hand-drawn map. So it's like, dude, if we don't get to, then, then we're just sleeping in like 45 degree rain outside. So we, yeah. we gotta get somewhere. There's very few farms even out there. The ones that are speak like maybe Spanish, maybe Quechua. So like even the fucking guy who knows how to speak Spanish might not be able to communicate with them. And not many of those. And how are we gonna be like, can I sleep in your fucking barn, you know? So we're getting lost. 
this guy, it's like he's never done fucking acid before because he is just gone, going like, you have to feel the fucking No. Nah. Yeah. So he got back to the door, he took his shoes back off. Like, oh, already they're back off yeah. already. And he goes, you got to feel And I'm like, hey, we got to follow this map. We got to figure out this map. We've been gone for maybe an hour off the road. I don't know where we are. And we're both like, hey. And he's like, come play with me. And we're like, dude, we're just like, hey, we give him the look like, ignore that guy. We need, we are at least an hour out of the way and it's getting dark at some point soon. So he's like, no, let's just try. Let's just go. That's what he said. Let's just go, man. I forgot about all this. Let's just walk. I'm like, no, that's not going to work, dude. We can't just walk. We're going to die. So like, so we're like, all right, I think it's back there. I think we maybe, if we miss that turn, if that's what it was, these random marks, like a big set of rocks turn left. And you're like, okay. But then you're like, there's lots of those. So if that was where we missed it, then we got like an hour to go back. We're already two hours behind schedule. Now it's like. So we're like, what do you think we should do? Because if we go back and it's not the right way, then we fucked ourselves even more. That's this fucking wood nymph that's dancing around us. So we're like, let's go back. So we go back and then like talk to some fucking farm guy. And he's like, I think it's there in broken Spanish. But like, it's like, no way. How long? He goes, sometime. They don't have like, even like, I don't think they got to watch. It's just like, you know, the sun will go up there and come down and then your day. So you just start walking, these windy things, fog's rolling in, it's getting dark, and you just walk up windy, 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 and you just it just never stops. You just keep going up. And you're like, all right, we've got probably an hour before it's like, the sun's gone, you know, we've got an hour maybe, or it's going away before it's like completely dark, and then we're, I don't, I just like, I don't know, I don't know how far it is. And then you finally fucking, you get to the top, and, and then it's just like, it flattens out, and then you walk a few more steps, and it's just these giant crater lake. Remember, um, have you ever gone to um, Deep Creek Lake? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's that big, but a circle. So imagine all Deep Creek Lake with all those channels just yeah. put together in one giant circle. It's just this is gorgeous. Beautiful, yeah. Just and this gorgeous. this guy's ruining it for you. Ruin. <laughs> Ruin. I mean, you yeah. try to have a moment. Yeah. We would do this game. Oh my God, just like, it should have been amazing. <laughs> it should have been instantly you go up there and everyone just gets quiet. And it's like, this, and he's trying to write his fucking book on it in the moment. This is, um, moments like these are when you're like, dude, save it for your fucking journal. Are you serious? Oh my God. He was trying to be like re really poetic and shit in the moment. And just like, dude, this is going, go into the tank and just write about it later. Have your fucking feelings for a while. This is my problem with everyone on their fucking taking pictures of their phone. It's like you're commemorating the moment. You're not done doing it yet. You know? Yeah. Take a picture on your way out of the music festival <laughs> just with a sign. And then be like, that'll bring back the memories. Not every second. My old man. So like, uh, God damn. There was this game we tried to play. We learned in the Amazon. It's called a sound bath or a nature bath. I forget what he said. Amazon. It's uh, Ecuador is the Amazon, the mountains, and then the beaches. So, um, and then the island beaches. But like, they, uh, so you walk like 20, 20 yards ahead of the next guy, 200 yards ahead of the next guy, so you can't hear him anymore. And then you, and then you walk, let them get way ahead, you just walk very slowly and just listen to this fucking sound of nature, right? And just kind of let it wash over you. You're not worried about talking to anybody. So you guess it's just like really chill. All of a sudden you notice all the insect noises and all the fucking birds and maybe some other birds far away. You notice like maybe a chainsaw way away. You just notice when you're not, you know, concentrating on what someone else is saying. So I was like, I noticed a bird. It was sunset. I noticed a bird. That's when they come out. I was like, let's play. I was like, hey, Tony, let's play the fucking sound bath game. And this fucking, whoa, whoa what's that? Local culture? What is it? <laughs> We're like, you just be quiet. And you let like the sound wash over you. Do that you do that. That's the same game you do with your kids, you know? Just play the quiet yeah, game. Yeah, quiet game. So you can be quiet the longest. And, right, and then they're like, I'm going to win this. And you're like, you fucking idiots. You stupid idiots. Here's why it's better on kids. Your kids are not annoying at their core. <laughs> Don't That's like to brag all the time. So we're able to do it for a little bit. And we take tr we take like moments too where it's like we'd walk separately, me and my partner, way up ahead, way behind. So it's like Sophie's choice. Bother one of us. You can't bother both. It was, it was almost like a look of like whoever he goes to, the other, enjoy your freedom for a little bit, enjoy your yeah. nature, enjoy quiet. Have fun with Bandit. Try to not to lose track of us, but like then. You... So we 
go up 20 yards, walk. How many hours would you say you've spent with this person? Over a full day. Oh, okay. So at this point, f- like 5, 11. Also at night at the hiker site. We're yeah, having dinner. We can't be like, it. we're having dinner alone today. Right. He's with you. Yeah. He's luggage. Oh, yeah. It's three days of nonstop. God. There's no one else. There's no one else with us. God forbid three whole days. Of just no one else. Three of us. The only English speakers. I... <laughs> And it doesn't stop. It's morning, noon, and night. God. As you're doing the nature hike, he he starts making up the ground and then starts talking. And it's like, oh, no, no, you got to be quiet. You got to be quiet. And he goes, oh, okay. Walk ahead. Then he starts catching up again. And you're like, no, no. Okay, you go walk ahead then. And he walks ahead. Then he'll stop. I'm like, hey, dude, so we got to separate. That's how you get the nature thing. It was an hour of peace. When he finally got it, but then that was it. An hour. An hour. T- and then it was like, all right, sundown. We had to walk the last part of the way around the crater. At least we knew the crater was there. So the way around pitch black. Um, God damn. We had, we had a, there were some kids that were like, hey, which way is it to go? And they were like, um, that way. Tony's like, hey, here, take a, take a candy. I got a candy. It's like, sweet. Fucking yeah. He's like, hey, you don't give kids to local. You don't give candy to locals. Because it makes them, incentivizes them to not go to school. They'll just beg. And I'm like, dude, yeah, we're not in like a touristy area. You know what I mean? They're not waiting outside, waiting for a fucking hiker to come by yeah. all day for one piece of candy. It's not beggars in like Bangkok. This is like different. He's like, you shouldn't do it. It's like, all right, don't do it. Fine. He's like, well, and he starts talking down to you about it. It's like, all right. Like, the kid's fine. He's getting a piece of candy. My guy's like, hey, well, and guess what? In Scotland, they say if a kid gives you directions, you give him candy. So that's a culture too. Calm down. We're starting to lose it a little bit. So like uh, earlier, past another kid, which way is the right way? She just looks at her dad. Why is that wearing man, no, man wearing no shoes? <laughs> Quato, uh, no that's what they start saying. Yeah. Just looking at like, hey, which way is the, you know, the, the, lake, the crater lake? And she's like, daddy, why is he wearing no shoes? We're poor and we wear shoes. We're fucking mountain farmers and we wear shoes. Yeah, right. Why is this white not wearing it's shoes white. in the fucking cold outdoors? <sighs> so, uh, yeah, I mean. It was, it, but it, whatever, you make the best of it. I mean, I got mocked later. So we're on the way home. And By he, who? My partner. Oh. Who was like, you said you said it'd be cool. I'm like, yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was I wrong. mean, all right, I'll take some blame on that. I thought it'd be okay. I don't know. I just thought it's another guy. <laughs> I thought, you know, yeah, all right. Clearly, I was wrong. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah, that's like the worst case scenario in any of these things. Just matching up with somebody you know. That was the worst case because you couldn't get out of it. You couldn't be like, actually, you know what? I'm done in this town. I'm going to go. Like, we're just bailing on you. Fuck you. you there was yeah. never a thought to get up in the middle of the night and just break out. Yeah, for sure. We thought about it. How can we? But they'll find me. Yeah. And if he sees this, it's like, dude, nothing personal. Just, you're just. <laughs> I was about to ask. Yeah, it, just, it just wasn't a match. It just wasn't a match. It wasn't a match. <laughs> just like, you know, everybody's got their favorites and just like, it just, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll stop it there. But uh, before we do, I told you before uh, we recorded advice you'd give to your 16-year-old self. Yeah, you did. So I'm curious what you would say to your 16-year-old self. So when I was 16, I was an Orthodox Jew. Mm -hmm. So there'd probably be a few things. I don't know if what I'd understand, because that's got to go into it. What are you going to understand as a 16-year-old? You can't be like, invest in Bitcoin. They'd be like, I'm not holding on to that information. What is that? You know? You can be like, here's who's going to win a championship game in two years. Mm -hmm. You know, bet everything. I mean, if I told him like, hey, girls want to fuck too, don't be scared Two, yeah. as well. You know, I, that 16 year old boy would be like, but I, I mean, no way. I barely, I've never fucked. I'm not going to fuck for almost a decade from now. Like there's no way I'm even thinking in terms of that. It might be that though. Chicks Charles. also want it. So you're not doing them a disservice by like asking a girl out, you know, or hitting on somebody. Like if you feel it, fucking go for it. That's perfect advice. If you feel it, go for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Be nice about it. <laughs> you want to yeah. hang out sometime. But like, yeah, I, that took too long. 
to when you realize like you could just be like, yeah, you're getting vibes from somebody. He's like, yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> you can't, you can't. It's the way waste time. That or no, I'd be that. I mean, I could tell him I like, drop this religion shit, but he, he wouldn't do it. Not then. Not then. He yeah. would have done it when it was time. Maybe that's. I mean, no, that's good advice too. Though, look at twenty-seven. You can get out. Don't yeah, worry about it. That's Everybody's right. gonna not. come around. They'll be mad now, but yeah. they'll come around. <laughs> you know, at some point, believe it or yeah, not, your dad yeah. is gonna say you can get a cheeseburger if you want out here. Um, promote whatever you want again, please. Um, yoga with Ari and friends is coming in a month. Ari and Sekla will be one of my friends. Doing a month long challenge in January. Do yoga with me. And my friends every day for January. If you want to, until now, get ready. There's a Yoga with Ari playlist on uh, on YouTube. And my podcast, Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, is out there right now. Uh, I'll be in Boston on December 9th and, and Denver coming up and San Francisco and you know, big cities coming next year. Ari Shafir.com is all where right. everything else. My podcast, Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, is on YouTube and Spotify and all those things. I love it, dude. Thank you for coming on, for real. It was great to have you. Could you do that? Yeah, I could do that. I can do that. It's not bad. I can't do it on my left, but I can get on my right. That's that old dip. Oh, yeah. Remember, yeah, I used yeah. to do that dip shit. Uh, as always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to y'all next week.